Hello, reader. Welcome back for an all-new Reading Bug adventure with me and the Reading Bug. For those of you I haven't met before, I'm Lauren, and this podcast is written, performed, and produced by The Reading Bug, our independent bookstore in California. Thank you to all of our listeners, shoppers, and supporters for your continued support, especially during this past year. We have received so many letters, pictures, and emails from all of you, and each one brightens our day as we continue to run our bookstore and record our podcast from home. We have spent long hours writing and recording this season while trying to keep our store open. And while we aren't out of the woods yet, I do want to thank everyone for their awesome support. Please consider continuing to support us by shopping at thereadingbug.com. There, you can choose from millions of books and gifts or find recommendations from our staff or select customized care packages for your loved ones. You can even find books from your favorite Reading Bug Adventures episodes at thereadingbug.com slash adventures. You can also support us by signing every young reader you know up for a personalized subscription at readingbugbox.com. Every month, the expert booksellers in our store and I handpick books that are best suited to each reader based on their age, interests, reading level, and customized notes. Every box is unique and magical, helping children discover and grow a lifelong love of reading. Before we get started on our adventure, I have a few people to thank. Thanks first to Resonate Recordings, who does the sound mixing and mastery for every Reading Bug Adventures episode. And thanks to our sponsors and to all of you for helping us continue to make this podcast. It takes a lot of time to write and record every episode and every song, and we couldn't do it without your help. A big thank you and hello to our newest patrons, Ryder and Grayson, Sailor, and Chance from Florida. You're part of what makes Reading Book Adventures podcast possible. To become a patron and support our work, please visit patreon.com slash readingbugadventures. Okay, reader, are you ready for another adventure with me and the Reading Bug? Great! Then let's fly! It's time for a Reading Bug Adventure! It's a Reading Bug Adventure There's lots of fun in store Just inside our book bag There's new places to explore Grab your crayons and paper And your imaginations too The Reading Bug and I can't wait To share our trip with you Reader, welcome back. The Reading Bug and I are so glad to see you. We've been waiting for you to arrive so the Reading Bug can tell us all about today's adventure. Yeah, good day, mate. I was just telling Lauren how excited I am about where we'll be going today. And I'm sure you'll be excited about it too. Today, we're going to visit a continent that we've never, ever been to before on any of our past adventures. Ooh, that's a great clue. Reader, do you remember how many continents there are on Earth? Seven. There are seven continents, and we've already visited a lot of them. North America is where we live, and we've been all over that continent on our adventures. We visited the Midwest part of North America on our dinosaur adventure, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, on our airplane adventure, and we visited a part of the country that later became Massachusetts on our Thanksgiving adventure. What other continents have we visited, reader? We visited the African continent on our safari adventure, our Egyptian adventure, and our gorilla and chimpanzee adventures. And we flew to the continent of Asia when we went to Japan on our ninja adventure and to Europe on our Roman adventure. That's right. So we've already adventured to North America, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Oh, and we visited the continent of Antarctica on our penguin adventure. Yes. So we've been to five of the seven continents together. What are the two continents that we haven't visited yet? South America, and, um, Australia. Yes, yes, yes. And today, we're going to visit the land down under. The land down under? Under what? If that's a hint, reading bug, I don't understand. I think I might need another clue. Hmm. Okay, let me see. How's this one? The continent we are visiting is the only continent that is just one country, and that is also an island. Okay, islands are surrounded by water on all sides, right, reader? South America is connected to North America, so South America is not an island. That means we must be planning an adventure to Australia! Yes, yes, yes! You got it! We are on our way to Australia today! The land down under? Australia is called the land down under because it is the only continent, other than Antarctica, that is located entirely below the equator, in the southern half of the world, the part that is called the Southern Hemisphere. 
It's a very big country, almost as big as the United States, if you exclude Alaska, that is. Well, if it's that big, we can't see all of it in one trip, can we? So, where in Australia will we be going today, Reading Bug? I read in Australia by Marty Gillen that Australia has rainforests in the northeast, huge deserts called the outback in the middle of the country, mountains running along the eastern coast, and tropical grasslands that cover the northern part of the country. All that in one country? Yes, and it also has the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest group of ocean reefs in the world. In Race the Wild Great Reef Games, Kristen Earhart says that the Great Barrier Reef stretches for almost 1,500 miles off the coast of northeastern Australia. 1,500 miles is almost as long as the entire east coast of the United States. I, for one, would love to visit the Great Barrier Reef. I heard that it's the only landmark on Earth that is so huge you can see it from outer space and that it's home to more than 1,500 species of fish. We could go snorkeling there or maybe even scuba dive. I definitely want to visit the Great Barrier Reef, too, but we'll need to do that on another adventure. Today, we're going to be staying on land. I've always wanted to see the many unique and extraordinary animals that only live in Australia. Did you know that more than 170 marsupials live in Australia? No, I didn't know that, Reading Bug. (laughs) I don't even know what a marsupial is. Do you, Reader? (laughs) Of course. Marsupials are animals that carry their babies in a pouch, Lauren. When baby marsupials are born, they are teeny tiny and completely helpless. All they can do is crawl into their mother's pouch, and they stay there until they are large enough and strong enough to survive outside. Almost all marsupials are only found in Australia. The only marsupial that lives in North America is the possum. There are 170 animals that carry their babies in pouches? I thought the only animal that carried its baby in a pouch was a kangaroo. Oh, no. There are many, many more, like wallabies, wombats, koalas, quokkas, and the largest meat-eating marsupial in the world, Tasmanian devils. Yikes. Tasmanian devils? Yes. Tasmanian devils are fierce, just like their name suggests. They have powerful jaws, sharp teeth, and long, pointy claws. But they don't usually attack people. That's a relief. You don't need to worry, because we also won't be visiting them today. Tasmanian devils can only be found on the island of Tasmania, which is located off the southeast coast of Australia. But if you ever want to visit there, remember, as long as you don't bother a Tasmanian devil, it won't hurt you, unlike some of the other animals that live in Australia. Did you just say that there are animals in Australia that can hurt people, Reading Bug? I was excited about kangaroos and koalas, but now I'm not so sure. What kinds of dangerous animals live in Australia? Well, for a start, there are 270 kinds of poisonous snakes there. 270? Yes, the deadliest snake in the world, the Taipan, lives in Australia. Luckily, though, Taipans are pretty shy, so I don't think we have to worry about running into one today. Yeah, luckily. There are brown snakes all over Australia, though. Brown snakes are not just deadly. They are also known for their bad tempers. Oh, And then there's the mulga. Oh, no, no, no. Stop. That's enough. I think all snakes are creepy and scary, even the ones that aren't poisonous. Just hearing about these poisonous snakes makes my skin crawl. Okay, okay. We don't have to talk about the snakes, Lauren. But you should be careful of the poisonous spiders in Australia. The redback spider's venom causes really bad pain. But it's not deadly. There's also the funnel web spider. It looks like a great big tarantula, and its fangs are so powerful that they can penetrate your fingernails. Or even your shoes. A spider that can bite through shoes? Sure. And I've read that there are even poisonous trees in Australia. In Countries Around the World, Australia, by Mary Coulson, it says that there are six different species of stinging trees in the down under. The most painful is called the gimpy gimpy tree. (laughs) The gimpy gimpy tree? That doesn't sound dangerous. It sounds like it should be cute and cuddly, like the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Or truffula trees in the Lorax. It may sound cute, but gimpy gimpy trees are very dangerous. Even the slightest touch of a leaf of a gimpy gimpy tree can cause a lot of pain. You feel burning pain immediately, and then it gets worse, as your arms start to swell and throb. So in Australia, even the trees are poisonous? Oh my, that sounds terrifying. Reading Bug, I don't think I want to go there anymore. What do you think, Reader? Should we sit today's adventure out? I promise we'll be careful, Lauren. 
I'm sure we can find a good guide to lead us through the country safely. And besides, despite all the dangerous wildlife, Australians and visitors to Australia still see way more normal injuries. The ones you might get at home, like wasp or bee stings. Did someone say bee? Spelling bee! bee. <laughs> Hi everyone! Reading Bug told me we're going to Australia today. And I just couldn't keep myself away. My absolute favorite animal lives there. And Australia is the only place you can see it in the wild. Your favorite animal? What is it, Bee? A kangaroo? Or a Tasmanian devil? Nope. It's my favorite because its name is so fun to spell. P-L-A-T-Y-P-U-S. Platypus. Ever since Reading Bug introduced me to Emu by Annika Dunkley and Brian Wan, I've wanted to see a real-life platypus for myself. A platypus? I'm not even sure I know what a platypus is. What do you think, reader? Should we go to the land down under today and see a platypus with a spelling bee, even if it means doing our best to avoid poisonous animals, bugs, and trees? (gasps) Okay, we're in. But before we leave, I really think we should stretch out and get ready for the trip. We need to be ready to run as fast as we can if we encounter a terrifying taipan snake or a ferocious funnel web spider. Everybody stand up, unless you're buckled into your car or tucked into your bed, of course, and wiggle your fingers and toes. Are you wiggling? Great! Now stretch your arms up high over your head. Perfect. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, let's get ready to go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, now we're ready to go. That felt great! I'm stretched out, limber, and ready to go platypus sightseeing. Me too. Although, you do know there are lots of other amazing things to see in Australia, don't you, Bee? Sure, sure, sure. One last thing before we go, you two. Did everyone remember to bring crayons and paper with you on our adventure today? We always bring crayons and paper when we can, so we can draw pictures of all the amazing things we do and see. Like a platypus. (laughs) Yes, be like a platypus, or one of the many marvelous marsupials that live down under. Just like the illustrators of our favorite books, we draw pictures so that we can show them to our friends and family when we tell them about the adventures we had. Right, reader? At the end of today's adventure, I'll play some music and we can draw our illustrations together. But you're welcome to stop and draw at any time. Just pause the program and press play again when you're ready to continue. I can't wait to see what you draw! If you didn't remember to bring crayons and paper, no worries. Just press pause or have a grown-up do it for you and go get them now. The reading bug, the spelling bee, and I will wait right here for you. Okay, I'm really excited. Is everyone ready to adventure to Australia today? Great. Let's get going then. Magic Book Pag, please take us to Australia to visit the unique animals and all the marsupialia. Animals there come in all colors, sizes, and shapes. But please keep us safe from poisonous trees, spiders, and snakes. And don't forget, I'm counting on you to take us to find a friendly swimming platypus. Look, reader. The reading bug is opening her book bag, and it's growing bigger and bigger. Big enough for us all to climb inside. And look inside, I can see all kinds of amazing things in there from the books about Australia that the reading bug brought with her. I can see a huge red rock that's bigger than a building in the middle of a sandy desert. And I see several long wooden horns. They must be at least four feet long, covered with colorful paintings. I can also see kangaroos. Red ones, brown ones, and beige ones. Big ones, small ones, and medium-sized ones, hopping and jumping all over the place. How about a platypus? See any platypus? (laughs) Not yet, Bee. But I see some other really great words. Look! Didgeridoo, bush tucker, witchetty, aborigine, cassowary, puggle, echidna. Uh oh. I see some creepy crawlies in there too. Snakes, spiders, and other bugs and reptiles lurking about. Remember, we'll need to keep close together and avoid injury on today's adventure reader. Okay. Are you ready to hop inside the book bag with me? Let's take three hops, then jump inside together. 
Ready? One hop, two hops, three hops, and we're in. Let's jump inside our book bag. What will we find there? Imaginations run away. What's in our book bag? Our trusty book bag. What will we learn about today? Reader, the book bag is flying higher and higher. We're going up, up, up into the sky, high above our homes and backyards, our schools and our parks. As the streets and the expressways in our neighborhood get smaller and smaller, all I can see are the greens and blues and browns of the landscape below us, the blue of the sky and the white cotton clouds that we're passing through and around. And now we're flying over blue water, spotted with occasional small islands. But one landmass in the distance looks much, much bigger. Well, that must be Australia. I see dense emerald green forests, wide open green meadows, green, yellow, tan, and brown squares that must be crops growing on their farms there. There's also a giant stretch of brown and gold in the middle of the continent. The book bag is slowing down now. I think we're about to land. But where? We made it. I can't wait to start our adventure. Let's be careful as we get out of the book bag. There's no telling what wild animals may be lurking nearby. Follow me. Oh, reading bug. I think something went wrong. We've gotten smaller, like in our garden and race car adventures. The vines and trees are so dense above us that they're almost blocking out the sun. And look at the big, brilliant, iridescent blue butterflies that are flitting about everywhere. Each butterfly is bigger than my hand. I don't think you got any smaller, Lauren. Those butterflies are just really big. I read about them. They are called Ulysses butterflies. And there are hundreds of them flying all around us. It's incredible. These are the biggest butterflies I've ever seen. And listen, I can hear music from all the singing songbirds. But I don't see any other animals, do you? What's so funny, Reading Bug? That wasn't me. Spelling bee? Me neither. But someone, or something, is definitely laughing at us. Come out this second and show yourself. Raider, reading bug, B, look, it's that bird over there. He's the one laughing at us. He has dark brown wings, a reddish tail, a white head with dark brown eye stripes running across his face, and a black upper bill. And when he opens his beak, the strangest laughing sound comes out. A laughing bird? That must be a kookaburra, of course. They live in Australia, too. You remember the song about the laughing kookaburra up in the old gum tree, don't you? Kooky, what have you found over there, mate? A couple of visitors? What a lovely surprise. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Lauren? Reader? Bug? We're not alone. The spelling bee is right. Look, there's a man and a woman just ahead of us. And they're surrounded by animals. The woman is standing holding a tea tray. And the man is seated on a folding chair next to a folding table. I said welcome. Don't be afraid. We don't all bite. Well, that's not entirely true. Most of these animals could bite you if they wanted. My name is John, and I see you've already met my mate, Kuki Kookaburra. Kuki? <laughs> That's a pretty fitting name. I'm Lauren, and this is the Reading Bug, the Spelling Bee, and our reader friend. We're here on an adventure. Spelling Bee, well, g'day. My name is Woomba, which means native bee in my Kuka Yalanji language. Great name. We don't usually get visitors way out here. You must be very experienced adventurers. Oh, yes, we are. Isn't that right, reader? But, uh, we've never heard of a country named Kuku Yalanji. I thought we were in Australia. You are in Australia, but my people, the Kuku Yalanji, and many other Aboriginal nations, or clans, lived here long before there was a country called Australia. There were more than 500 different clans scattered all around the continent, and each clan had its own culture, beliefs, and language. We've been here for 50,000 years, and our land has only been known as Australia for less than 300 years. The land was named Australia by the Europeans when they arrived. So, don't worry, you are in Australia. In the Daintree National Park in Queensland, Australia, to be precise. The Daintree Forest is the oldest rainforest in the world. 
My clan are the traditional owners of the rainforest that are located in the northeastern part of Australia. We are often called the rainforest people because of our close relationship with nature and the rainforest. Are you here to see some of the wildlife that lives here? Oh yes, I want to see a platypus. And the many marsupials and exotic birds. Just nothing dangerous or deadly. Well, I can't promise you won't run into anything deadly, but the Daintree Rainforest is home to 430 bird species, 12,000 insect species, and almost one third of all the reptile, frog, and marsupial species that live in Australia. So you're in the right place to see Australia's animals. As you can see, a few of these animals have joined Woomba and me for a weekly tea party. You've already met Kuki, but let me introduce you to the marvelous marsupial nestled in my lap. Her name is Muskie. She's a musky rat kangaroo, the smallest kangaroo in kangaroo wallaby family. That's a kangaroo, but she's so small. That's right. Muskie is only 15 inches long from her nose to the tip of her tail, and she's fully grown. Over there is one of Muskie's cousins, Benny. He's a Bennett's tree kangaroo. Most kangaroos have long back legs to help them leap on land, but tree kangaroos like Benny have shorter back legs and more powerful front legs that give them greater control and balance as they climb and move through the trees. I see him. Benny is mostly dark brown, although his chin, throat, and abdomen are a lighter caramel color. I think he looks a bit like a koala, don't you, Reader? His ears are rounded like a koala, but his beautiful bushy tail looks a lot more like a squirrel's tail. And the little brown girl seen over there, with a pretty dark muzzle and the white stripes running along her cheek, is Sylvia. She looks like a tiny brown kangaroo, and she's actually a swamp wallaby. If you look closely at her tummy, you can see there is a joey sticking its tiny head out of her pouch. I see him! A little baby sticking his head out! Why did you name him Joey, though? How do you know the baby's a boy? <laughs> we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. All marsupial babies are called Joeys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and here's one more for you. What kind of animal do you think this is, Lauren? I don't know. She's small, brown, roundish, and spiky. She looks kind of like a porcupine. Good guess, Lauren. But wrong. <laughs> Spike isn't a porcupine. She's an echidna. An echidna? E-C-H-I-D-N-A? Oh, that's a fun one. Yes, I read about them in Amazing Facts About Echidna by Devin Haynes. Echidnas have sharp spines all over their body, but they're not related to porcupines. They are related to platypuses. They are? Yes, echidnas and platypuses are the only mammals in the world that lay eggs like birds and reptiles. Even though echidnas aren't marsupials, they also have a pouch. After the mama echidna lays her egg, she nudges it into her pouch, where the baby hatches about 10 days later. A newborn puggle weighs only about half as much as a mini marshmallow. And lucky for mama, the puggle doesn't have spines when it's born. Did you say puggle? <laughs> yes, Lauren. Baby echidnas and baby platypuses are called puggles. And their babies are just as cute as their name. Wow, Lauren. I can see you've brought a very well-read little reading bug along with you today. John, did you say that you and Woomba have a tea party here every week? Oh, yes, I did. Woomba and I both work for the Daintree National Park. I'm a veterinarian, and Woomba leads tours here. As a Kuku Yalanji clan member, she provides visitors with a perspective of the rainforest and how it has provided food, tools, shelter, and medicine for her clan for at least 50,000 years. On our days off, we meet here for a bush tuck of tea. I hike in, and Woomba, who lives further away, uses her canoe to get there. It started off being just Woomba and me, but over the years, our tea party has expanded to include many of the animals that you see here today. I didn't realize you were a veterinarian. From now on, I'll call you Dr. John. That's not necessary, Lauren, but my friends call me Doc. Okay, then Doc it is. Lauren, if you look up, you'll see that more of our guests have logged in by air including several emerald green parrots, some rainbow lorikeets, and a handful of white cockatoos. Hello there, Cocky, Tutu, Laurie, Larry, Polly, and Preston. So glad that your families can join us here for tea today. Larry, did you bring a date? She's lovely, mate. Raider, look. Doc and that cockatoo seem to be having a conversation with one another. How strange. 
Do you think he can understand what the bird is saying? Doc and Wumba seem very nice, but it's a little odd to be having a tea party with a bunch of animals in the middle of the rainforest, don't you think? I think it's fun. Oh, look out! Incoming! More guests for the tea party, I think. You're right, Reading Bug. It's a family of orange frogs hopping toward Doc and Wumba. And look! Over there, there's a great big bird walking through the plants. It's as tall as I am, maybe even taller. It looks like an ostrich, except that it has black feathers tipped with silver, and a beautiful sapphire blue face with a horny outgrowth on its head that looks kind of like a helmet. Hi, Birdie! Hi! Are you here for the tea party as well? Uh oh. Uh oh? Shh! I think we need to get away from that bird, and quickly. Lauren, reader, start walking backward, slowly and very quietly. And maybe hold your backpacks in front of your body for protection. If we're lucky, the bird will get distracted and leave us alone. What? Why are you so worried about a big bird that can't fly, Reading Bug? Because I recognize that bird. It's a southern cassowary, a bird that is found only in Australia. Look, it has three toes on each of its powerful legs, and each toe has a big, sharp claw on it that the bird uses for scratching and fighting. I read in Middle School Escape to Australia by James Patterson that the cassowary can outrun a person, and those razor-sharp claws can do a lot of damage. I do not like the way that bird is looking at us. Reader, let's do what the reading bug suggests and start backing away. That big bird sounds mad. Watch out! Whoa, whoa, whoa. What have we got here? Cassidy, you stop that right now. Is he stirring up trouble over there? Yes, I think he's getting ready to attack us. Cassidy, these are my friends. What did they do to make you so mad? We didn't do anything to him, I promise. I don't know why he got so angry. Oh, you brought the babies along for tea, did you? Cassidy? Lauren, Cassidy is sorry. He was just looking out for his chicks and didn't know you were all my mates. Lauren, Reader, B. Look, there are two fuzzy light brown baby birds in the bushes behind Cassidy. They don't look much like him, though. In time, they will. Cassidy is a papa cassowary, and these are his babies. The papa bird takes care of the babies after they hatch until they are able to take care of themselves. And, as you can see, papa here doesn't like anything or anyone to get close to his babies. He'll attack you if he thinks you're a threat. But don't worry. I've got just the treat to help him calm down. Here, pal, have some plums from the cassowary plum tree. That's what I thought. They just love this fruit. It comes from the tree over there. See, the one with the long, smooth leaves and deep blue fruit. Those plums like ice cream cones for cassowaries. They love them. Now, Cassidy, leave my mates alone and go bring your chicks to meet Wumba. Sorry about that. Bit of temper there, that one. I'll say. Thanks for stepping in, Doc. And sorry to have upset Cassidy like that. No worries. Each and every animal out there has its own personality. And in all my years working, I've come to know them all. All of them? Doc, do you know any platypuses? Do they ever join for tea? Unfortunately, no. There are platypuses in Daintree Rainforest, but I haven't convinced any of them to join our little bush tucker tea Yet. I know a platypus who lives nearby, Bee. If you really want to see him today, I could take you all there in my canoe. <gasps> a canoe ride through the rainforest to find a platypus? That sounds wonderful. And even better, I don't think we'll have to worry about poisonous snakes or spiders or trees if we're in a canoe out on the water. <laughs> sure, but you're going to need to paddle. I'll need your help powering the canoe if we're all going together. Here's an idea. Before leaving, why don't we take a little rest? Woomba and I will prepare our bush tucker tea for you and our animal friends. A little rest sounds great, to be honest. It's hot here. But you keep saying bush tucker tea, Doc. Bush tucker. B-U-S-H-T-U-C-K-E-R. How fun. Doc, what is a bush tucker? Ah, just a little something we say out here. Tucker means food and bush means outback. So bush tucker is food that the Australian Aboriginal clans found in the wild and lived off for thousands of years before the Europeans arrived. 
See? The tea that Woomba's making is wild rosella tea. It's made from a special hibiscus bush that grows in northern Australia. Reader, while we rest and enjoy a bush tucker tea with Doc, Woomba, and all these animals, let's take some time to draw pictures of everything we've seen on our adventure today. What do you remember most? I think I'm going to draw a picture of Kuki, the kookaburro with his dark brown wings, reddish tail, white head with dark brown eye stripes, and black upper bill. And I'm going to draw a picture of Cassidy, the beautiful but angry southern cassowary, and his two chicks. We've already seen so much today. What are you going to draw, reader? Whatever you decide, I'm sure it will be amazing. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane, build a house with a giant crane. Whatever you do, one thing will be true. There's nothing you can't do. You can see it through just by being you. Hey, Lauren, did you notice that neither John nor Woomba were surprised that the spelling bee and I are able to talk? On our other adventures, the people we meet are often pretty shocked to meet a talking bug. Hmm, you're right, reading bug. It seems a little odd that they acted like talking insects were a normal, everyday kind of thing. Who knows? Maybe there's magic in the down under, too. While you are resting and drawing, I'll play some music for you on my didgeridoo. The didgeridoo is a traditional wooden wind instrument that is played by members of many Aboriginal clans. Although not all didgeridoos are painted, many include abstract shapes or picture symbols that may relate to the painter's clan or tell a story. Lizards, turtles, crocodiles, human figures, birds and other animals are often painted, along with pictures of animal tracks, waterholes and bush tucker. My didgeridoo includes pictures of the Milky Way and other stars that are visible in the night sky. Thank you for sharing your music with us, Woomba. And thank you, reader, for joining us on our adventure today. I can't wait to see you next time when we paddle down the river with Woomba to find a platypus. In the meantime, if you want to read more about Australia or its amazing animals, you can find a list of all the books in the Reading Bug's book bag at thereadingbug.com slash adventures. The Reading Bug and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. It's a Reading Bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper, and your imaginations too. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Thanks to all of our individual sponsors. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. This episode was performed by me, Chloe, and Riley Savage, and by Mallory Rockfuss and Luke Rotta. Sound mixing and mastery is by Resonate Recordings. The Reading Bug is our family-owned independent children's bookstore in California, and we're passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription box service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.